Hello everyone and welcome back to another Factorio Red Weekly. I'm Exterminator and as always we are uh, touching base on the uh, top posts here for the previous week on the Factorio subreddit. And we're going to hop right into it here with a uh, base uh, picture. I must have already looked at this. I did, which is, I remember this one, this one's quite funny. Uh, discovers that research isn't moving, then finds out that there isn't any blue science being made, and sees that red chips aren't being produced, because apparently there's no plastic coming in, which is caused by OF. <laughs> and yeah, <laughs> this is truly like the perfect description of Factorio, I think. Like if someone asks you, like how does Factorio work or what it's like to play, this 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 would be like a really good description, I, I think. Uh, happened more times than I'd like to admit. Also, biters s stuff up and wreckage, and making it hard to identify which belts are missing crippled my whole mid-game production. Uh, yeah, that uh, def that definitely is rough for sure. Um, but yeah, this is this is really funny when, when you just got to track back through your whole base what's causing this issue, and uh, usually it's like so unrelated that it's just it's just crazy. I mean, that's how the game works. Suggestion ideas. Factorio's new expansion. Let's share and discuss our ideas and expectations. Uh, Factorio Ocean Floor. Factorio Last Frontier. Factorio War Machines. Um, I can tell you right now that it's absolutely not either of these, probably. <laughs> like, I don't mean to be negative, but uh, if I had to guess, I would imagine it's something to do with space. Um, I, I, I don't... The, the devs have not done enough with water to make this really make any sense. And they stated pretty clearly before that they don't think enemies really are that much of a part of the game um, and don't intend for them to be. So I, I doubt anything like this would happen. I would love it to. I'm not saying it's a bad idea. I would love it to. I just don't really foresee that happening. This is like definitely taken from like a Discovery Channel thing or something. Uh, War Machine sounds nice, but only if we get expanded enemies, something like bandits, biters would also benefit from a bit of organization like a hive mind rather than a small ant hill. <clears throat> This is true. Unlike airborne or aquatic biters, and you have specific defenses to counter those. Yeah, that would be pretty cool. Um, kind of like StarCraft, Zerg stuff. Uh, but anything that's a bit more interesting than biters running at your turrets, and you just need to have enough turrets. Yeah, I mean, I don't get me wrong. I would love, I, I do hope for the expansion to have, like, some addition to enemies or how they work um, to make them a bit more interesting. Uh, but I highly doubt the expansion would actually focus on that. Moving gigantic alien terrasque or giant dune worms. <laughs> World War Z except it's those damn biters that bet trees are on their side. I assume this means World War Z. What where they nuke them, right? Uh, it would be rad if we could start to colonize other planets so the factory could grow even further with on May spaceship transport. Um, and newer, deadlier tech, even perhaps the planet killer so nothing can stop the growth of the factory. Kind of like Dyson Sphere program, but with nukes. Um, yeah, I, I would love something like a Dyson Sphere program, but in Factorio. We do have the space exploration mod, but I feel like something kind of like that, but in vanilla, made by the devs, is is really what I'm hoping for. And I kind of expect it to go that direction. Space exploration, no scaffold, asteroid spaghetti for my starter sciences. Oh my goodness. That is a lot of spaghetti. I love the uh, space rails, though. This just looks really cool. That is some serious spaghetti. Like, I don't know how they keep track of anything in, in, <laughs> in here, to be honest with you. Like, this is actually ridiculous. Oh, my lord. I don't even know. <laughs> I can't even follow this. Oof. That is rough. Um, let's see. Someone explain to me what any <laughs> what I'm looking at. Oh man, yeah, this is space exploration. Pretty crazy. Uh, tutorial guide: a hopefully simple visual representation of the output of different size smelting lines as you progress through the game. Um. So yeah, this is pretty good. Uh, full yellow belt, full yellow belt, or half a red belt. Oh, sorry, this is half a yellow belt. I can't read. Half a yellow belt. Full yellow belt or half red belt, this is 24 furnaces, um, 12 steel would be a full yellow belt or half a red belt, 24 steel makes a full red belt, or two thirds of a blue belt, and then this thing does a full blue belt. Um, 
Alternatively, I believe 36 um, steel furnaces or electric furnaces will do a blue belt. Um, so this is actually a really good representation of like why this type of build works really well is because it's so easily expandable. So if you watch my videos or my streams and, and a lot of other people as well, um, you'll notice that we usually start with something like this second version. And the reason for this is because it's incredibly easy to upgrade. This automatically will give you a full yellow belt, obviously considering you put in the resources to do this or, or like the resource that enough input or to make this fully work. Um, and then if you want to upgrade to red belt, literally all you have to do is just replace the yellow belt with red belt and replace the furnaces with steel furnaces and you automatically have a full red belt. Like you don't have to build anything extra. You don't have to expand upon it. You just replace what's here with a higher level version, which is really easy. Um, and then you automatically have double the throughput. Uh, and then if you want, you can just add uh, more. You can just add, what would this be? Like 12 more for 36, if, if my number is correct, to get a full blue belt. So really, really good. Um, but yeah, super cool. I am 57 years old and just retired from a 30 year career as a manufacturing engineer. Should I take the plunge? Yes. Just for demo, you'll know for sure after that. Yeah, I would say that's that's good. Um, trying the demo is a good start. <clears throat> Welcome to your new job. Hope you enjoyed retirement. <laughs> oh, this is the perfect reply. It's full time lifelong career. <laughs> I feel like I feel like they would love it. It would be uh, a good time, good thing to pass the retirement. Birthday present magnet and t-shirt from my husband i can stop whenever i want <laughs> this really needs to be an official factorio merch shirt <laughs> oh, and then the magnet this is fantastic well why would i ever want to need to make more yellow sauce the wife is obsessed nice <laughs> the marriage must grow Oh man, that is an awesome present. Really cool. Happy birthday. <laughs> uh, Phoenix factory building tip one. Compact arrangement for three in one, three in one out recipes. Lame, no space, not space efficient, uses a lot of poles and belts. Cool, compact, one pole per four machines, easy. So we're inputting iron and steel on both these. Um, basically, this is just significantly more compact and efficient. Um, so overall, I'd say good design for sure. Get rid of the steel bell on the right too, so it would be cooler and even more compact. Just input steel straight down and make output at the bottom. Yeah, that would work. Uh, mod concept, forgotten cities. I like the sound of this already. Uh, let me eat. I, I don't know if there's going to be music. I hope not, but... Ooh, this is super cool. This reminds me of uh, the thing I did with Bomb Bug, I think, was it? Yeah, Bomb Bug. Um, the, that scenario that I, I cannot recall the name of at the moment, but this is super cool. Here's a thought. Have the buildings be the main source of materials attached to deconstruction module to a building which outputs like a miner once the building is empty it disappears the actual output of the deconstructors would be stone and lesser amount of copper and iron that is super cool i like this idea i, I think this would add something uh, pretty neat to the game and today on mods it should be part of the base game why isn't loaders a part of the game um well first off this is like a compactor not really a loader um the devs considered loaders and then decided uh, that it would like take too much of the challenge out of the game, which I, I do agree with. I think inserters add a nice um, kind of challenge and puzzle to the game that loaders tend to get rid of. Now, some sort of compacting device like this actually is, um, would be really cool. Uh, yes, these are compactors, stackers, whatever you want to call them. <clears throat> well, and then these are loaders, so... <laughs> Um, yeah, it was a conscious decision not to include them, if I remember correctly, because they would bloat the types of game mechanics, so instead of stack inserters were added, 
beforehand, we only had fast inserters. Also adding a backend solution for every problem, reduce fun of the game. Yeah, exactly. So they disabled them. They're not technically completely gone. Like if you, um, I think if you turn on cheat mode or if you go into the editor, you can place them. Gone through many iterations of the starter base and I can say for sure that this one is the most recent. That is one heck of a starter base. That's pretty sweet. This is like massive blueprint, it looks like. I, I'm not, this is like nowhere near enough power, but um, I don't really know what this is for. Because <laughs> I guess this would be built first, so this is the power just for this, maybe. Um, I don't know where the power for the rest of this is, but that's clearly not it. Um, overall, really cool. This is like, I think this is like a speedrunning type of build. Starter base. It's perfect for the late early game. <laughs> um, I'm a victim of early game spaghetti base. Not bad. I mean, they're keeping it kind of compact, so that's cool. So organic. Yeah, you can you can see how this was kind of organically developed. It's uh, it's really pretty neat. Like how they looped this like all around the steam engine. <laughs> oh, I love it. When your brand new 4.4 gigawatt nuclear power plant starts for the first time so satisfying except that don't like that but oh almost a 20 mil green circuit achievement very nicely done i want to shoot a new get it so bad we have now three other power plants just like this one so please do happy with nuclear noises maxims of factorio on compiling some advice for Factorio players transitioning from having a from having grasp of basic mechanics to actually building a functioning base. Rules of thumb to LA one's worries or for help in designing factory components. Um, so I'm not going to read all these, uh, but some of these are really good. Uh, so like this, if it works, it works. If your factory outputs the correct things and the expected amounts, you probably built it correct move on to the next bit rather than trying to perfect what you just built um yeah now this is not to say that you shouldn't perfect it at some point like if you want you could definitely come back because that's part of the fun of the game but uh there's no need to just like worry yourself over one little bit if it's actually working it's free real estate um yep basically infinite space and uh yeah good tips for sure Hello, uh, new player here, only about 10 hours in. Why do I never have enough iron, even though the iron ore belt is full and I have excess furnaces that don't get used? Thank you. Um, so what's happening here is there is a yellow belt right there, I think. Yeah, so basically they're sharing coal and iron on a line. You know, it is a red belt, which means that half the red belt of ore is actually based it is equivalent to a full yellow belt um the problem is they're actually only getting half a yellow belt in because if i'm looking at this correctly if we switch to uh 720p here i don't know if it actually switched but it looks like where the merge point is that looks like a yellow belt to me um so that's what's slowing it down because it's merging onto a yellow belt so you're actually only getting half a yellow belt of ore so they did everything correct here and stuff i think and this is really easy to forget i do it all the time um is they just forgot to put a, a red belt right here if they put a red belt then they will actually get this entire line moving um and then this will be a full yellow belt worth of ore going through here and i mean this is a good tip too like that was just the first thing i spotted um so the amount of smelters you have on a single line of belts is too much for it to handle even more since you have coal on the same belt um, and then, yes, making a separate line of iron and smelter. Um, now, I don't know if you necessarily, like, I share lines of coal and iron in my builds, but uh, just literally, I think that's the main issue right there. So, um, swap belt side, simple contraption. What do we got here? So, 
is coming through. It's doing the side loading trick, which is pretty awesome. This is doing the same thing and then just undergrounding. This is a really cool uh, side swap trick, actually. I like it. I'm really new to Factorio, just 25 hours in, and I watched some guys in my first base in a main bus style base, but I realized I can't expand in that direction anymore. Should I just reroute the main bus downwards or deconstruct the whole factory as I recently unlocked bots? Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with just turning the bus. That would be, like, incredibly uh, simpler. <laughs> I can't talk. Uh, that would be significantly more simple uh significantly simpler to do that than to tear up your entire factory at this point if you just turn down considering you can build this way um yeah i would i would say that turning it downwards would be your best bet uh, is there any way to move resources from the left belt lane to the right without making an ice war similar to this um well this right here i don't th i mean obviously they maybe didn't see this, but just <laughs> conveniently, we have an answer right here. Um, if that's nice, or don't look at my factory. <laughs> I like it. I like their tag too. Spaghetti Master. Uh, I've been avoiding this game for years. Finally bought it yesterday. No regrets. Uh, I have a thing with these type of games. My previous benches were mostly on Anno 1800, and I would wreck my sleeping uh, schedule more often than not. This was main reason for avoiding Factorio for so long, but yesterday I finally bit the bullet, and I love it. Stayed up until 6 a.m., because of course I did. <laughs> Here's what I got so far. Nicely done. Pick with alt view. Tons of inserters and belts, but that's good, because you always need those things. New layout. Ooh, very nice. This is an interesting way of doing it. They're doing like a horizontal, like... <laughs> Horizontal bus, kind of. I mean, I mean, actually, okay, so I kind of was looking at this wrong. I see what they're doing. If I had any pointers, uh, the main thing is spread out more and also don't grab directly from the smelt line right here because that's going to cause some issues farther down. But generally, this is really good. Like, dang. I'm a noob and I got trains. How do I make it go one way when needed? Um, I assume they mean go the other direction. Um, you would need either a loop or a locomotive on the other end. Or, I, I don't, I assume you are driving your train manually, as with an automatic mode, it would not be a problem. Now using automatically. Okay, well, maybe that is just the answer. Automate everything, even printing images. This. This picture is creative, fully using items on belts. More info in the comments. But it won't load the picture. Thank you. Dude, that's crazy. <laughs> oh my goodness. Python script takes an image using my small Python blueprint library. I call Pytorio a small single cell blueprint is created. That is really cool. That's awesome. Uh, I know there's no wrong way to play this game, but, oh, damn it, mm, are you handcrafting this whole thing? Oh yes, oh dear. Okay, no thanks. <laughs> uh, is this good four-way junction? Pins around about society, it appears to be signaled correctly. Yes. If we uh, ignore the fact it's around about, the signaling looks good. I love Hectreo, but I hate aliens. So, I just started playing Factorio a week ago, and I love it, but I hate the aliens. I know I can create a world without them or without pollution, but my question is how much am I losing without them in terms of game experience? Should I like in my first run with them or create a new world without them? Um, you're really not missing out on that much. I'm sorry, when you discover he is aliens. <laughs> Problem, you don't like aliens. Solution, disable yourself. What you lose, the factory won't grow. You're the alien after all. Are we the baddies? <laughs> well, yeah, you do lose the experience on how to defend your base and how to expand it safely, but you will end up with a good idea of how things work. 
Um, I would say, I would really say a good medium for a new player is just play with the aliens on, but put them on peaceful mode. I mean, I guess you're still losing out on defending your factory, but you still have to fight them, but it's on your terms. So, I think I'll be okay on fuel cells for a while. Uh, yeah. All I can say from this is nukes. Approximately 130k U-238 and 77k U-235 plus 100 fuel cells. Well, you know what that means. Launch nukes from a Spider-Tron as if they were normal rockets. I seem to always lose track of where I place my car, so I decided to build a parking deck. Well, that's useful if you remember to park your cars in there, which personally I would not. <laughs> they seem to be doing a good job, but... So you can put down a new car whenever one goes missing? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I constantly lose my cars all over my map. Started placing new cars eventually, they'll be everywhere, and there will always be one to use. My strategy, exactly. Um, as a programmer, I'm always amazed at the amount of trickery and optimization that must have gone into this game. 250, sorry, 2,500 plus robots all upgrading everything in my base. Yeah, the optimization is just basically endlessly impressive. A game like Victoria, would you expect the devs to be anything other than uber nerds obsessed with optimization? As a newish programmer, I really wish I could see how they did it someday. I feel like I would learn a ton. Yeah, reading the Friday Facts would definitely be interesting um, for someone trying to learn. Original content, elite bulldozer time. I like the sound of this. Um, I'm not... Are they... They're using a mod, yeah? I wish tanks had the option to follow an entity normally, like Spider-Tron, but this is clearly done with a mod. This is so satisfying. Oh my goodness. I think this is using bullet trails too, maybe, which is really cool. Smack. <laughs> this is so fun. Okay, space exploration. Yeah, this is modded, but super cool. I love it. <laughs> so satisfying to just run over the bases with a tank. Um, I think... I think I'm going to call it here, folks. Uh, sorry, I was just reading another post. Um, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed some excellent stuff today. As always, new player stuff, cool bases, cool belt designs, and uh, tips and tricks and such. Awesome t-shirt. <laughs> I really want this. Uh, but I believe that's going to do it. Thank you so much. If you did enjoy it, a like is appreciated. Uh, if you're new to the channel, feel free to subscribe. Keep up with all future content. And uh, leave your thoughts below. As always, I do enjoy reading those. And until next time, I look forward to seeing you all. And do take care.